Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk through how to analyze a specific industry. Well, this will be helpful for you in two or three places. Number one, if you are applying for a job interview. Imagine if you are going to Ola Electric and if you have a little bit of background about auto industry itself, it will come in extremely handy. Number two, it can also help you in your consulting interviews where you don't know which question is going to come from which industry. You having a good overview of every industry will make a lot of sense, right? Number three, it can also help you in your generic conversations, in your MBA interviews, where you need to talk through about a lot of current affairs, right? So we'll talk about the specific analysis of an industry with a context that it will help you across all these three pillars. Okay, so we'll talk about auto industry as an example. And if you like this video, please do let me know, like and also let me know in the comments so that I can do more such videos related to pharma, healthcare, e-commerce, retail and a bunch of other industries too. So let us jump right away into the auto industry and the first factor that we need to analyze for any industry. That is, how do the organizations in this specific industry make money? Okay, so if we take about auto industry, there are four factors in which these guys make money. For example, let's take Maruti Suzuki or Mahindra and Mahindra or let's say any of these companies, MG Hector, right? The first way they make money is by selling cars, right? By selling vehicles. That is their first source of revenue. The second source of revenue is through selling spare parts, right? You own a vehicle. I own a Swift vehicle and after four or five years, there are a lot of repairs that is needed for change of gears, brake pads and a bunch of other things. Now I go to a Maruti dealer again for exchange or for replacement or for any of these spare parts, right? So selling spare parts is another interesting and important revenue stream for these companies. First one is selling of the vehicle itself. The second one is the spare part. And the third one is about financing the vehicle. Right. If you need to buy a car, most of us don't have 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs or whatever it takes to buy the car completely. So these guys give financing option as well. That is, hey, you pay every month an EMI and get the car right away. This financing option will help them with interest income. Right. So that's the third part. Now, the fourth way through which these guys make money is by selling their warranties. Right. They say that, hey, we have a five year extended warranty on this entire body parts, right? So typically nothing happens. So 99% of the time, this warranty amount goes into the pockets of these manufacturers, OEM manufacturers. But the 1% of the time, whenever anything happens, they are ready to take that entire cost, right? So we looked at what are the four or five ways in which Maruti Suzuki's or any other OEM manufacturers make actual money through these sales, right? That's number one. Whenever you are analyzing an industry, this is the first thing that you need to understand that, hey, how are the players in the industry making money? Only one or two things would be super obvious. You need to do a little more research to understand what are the third or fourth ways. For example, here, you will very quickly know that, hey, by selling the car, Maruti Suzuki is making money or by selling spare parts, they are making money. But by selling warranties and by selling financing options is also a way through which they make money is something which you need to think through a bit more and do a little more research to uncover. Okay. So that's the first part. How do these guys make money? The second part is what is the cost involved, right? If you take again the auto industry, the costs involved are around the manufacturing parts itself, right? The basic parts that go into building a vehicle constitute about 65 to 70 percent of the total cost. Another additional five percent of the cost go into employees, employee cost. Another five percent go into, let's say, depreciation cost and a five percent go into marketing cost. The leftover five to seven percent is what is the margin, right? Is the profit for these companies. So if they are selling a car for 10 lakhs, imagine Maruti is selling a car for 10 lakhs. The total costs would be around 9 lakhs 40,000 to 9 lakhs 50,000 and they are making a profit of only 40, 50,000 per car. And if you add tax on top of that, which is 18 to 20%, right? So they are literally making 
less than 3 to 4 percent of the overall price. So this specific industry is not a lot of profit oriented industry, right? The entire cost is basically being absorbed by the materials itself, the raw material that goes into making these cars itself, right? So, so this is how you need to think about costs versus revenues. Now, if you are asked in an interview, what are the various ways in which they can increase their revenues or what are the places where they can cut their cost, you very clearly know that, hey, making small changes here and there with respect to employee cost or depreciation cost or marketing cost will not move the needle much. What moves the needle much is with respect to the material cost itself because that is 70%. Similarly, with respect to the revenues, you know, you can actually tweak revenues at three or four places. So that is how you think about any industry. Think about revenues and think about cost. Now, the third factor that you need to think about with respect to any industry again is what are the current trending topics within that industry? If you take, for example, auto. In this, one of the key topics that you have been hearing continuously in the last six to eight months is shortage of semiconductors, right? Why is this happening and what is happening actually? Right? You need to understand these two things. The other important and interesting topic within auto is electric vehicles. Right? What is happening in the electric vehicles right now and why is it happening? Right? So you understand these two topics, why and what and how, for example, you will get a lot more clarity and you can speak about these topics too. So let us take, for example, the first one that is semiconductor shortage. So what is happening with respect to semiconductor shortage and why is this entire shortage happening? Now, if you take a step back and analyze, where is this semiconductor being used in the car manufacturing process? Bunch of different places. For example, while you are building a digital speedometer, you need a semiconductor chip. The second place where this could be helpful is when you are building a navigation system, right? The third thing, there are bunch of other things too where folks can use or folks will use rather these semiconductors in the entire process of building the car. Right? Now, why did this shortage happen in the first place? Because of this entire COVID in 2020 and 2021, the demand for auto vehicles, right? the demand for cars was fluctuating quite a bit. For six months, nobody was buying a car. Then all of a sudden, there was a demand increase. Right? So the car manufacturers like Marutis and Mahindras and a bunch of other players, they did not place the orders right. Right. That was one of the biggest reasons. And simultaneously, what was happening was because of the increase in work from home, other industries were seeing an increase in the demand for semiconductors. So the manufacturers of semiconductor chips, they were diverting the semiconductor that was going to the auto industry into other industries like PC manufacturing and a bunch of other places. So at an industry level, this shift was happening. And it usually takes 12 to 18 months for this auto industry demand to, sub to basically get to an even state. Right? So that is one of the big reasons why this entire semiconductor shortage has happened. Now, the second reason why this has happened is because of the geopolitical reasons. Now, the entire semiconductor manufacturing industry is based out of Asia. With China taking the entire lead role in this manufacturing process, and the tension between China and US increasing to an all time high, a lot of players like Apple, Samsung, Google, they started to realize hey, something bad might happen. So let us store more of these semiconductor chips. So these guys were actually storing inventory and that was leading to a lot of supply chain disruptions in the auto industry and other industries, right? So that was another reason. Now you think about three or four such reasons, you will very clearly understand that, hey, this is where semiconductors are used in the car manufacturing process. For example, navigating systems or speedometers or a bunch of other places. And two, the reasons why they are shortages is because of these three things, right? Geopolitical reasons, the industry demand was fluctuating and other industries demand was increasing. Now, this is how you analyze any current topic. Okay. I'm just giving an example for auto. But you can apply similar examples, similar thought process for other industries and other current processes so that you can speak about these things in the industries in an intelligent way. Now, the second topic I would again give an example is regarding electric vehicles. Right? Now, what is happening with respect to electric vehicles? A lot of players 
whether it is Maruti, Mahindra, Toyota, all these companies are also building their electric vehicles. Right? Now, the interesting thing about electric vehicles is that all the governments are giving subsidies. Right? So that hey, if the price of the electric vehicle car, let's say EV car is around 10 lakhs, government is giving a subsidy of 60 to 75,000 rupees. So it's coming cheaper for the end user. Now, these subsidies would end at some or the other point. So the price of the car will go up and similarly, then the customer will start thinking, should I spend that additional 75,000 or 80,000, right? So that is one. The other thing, government is also providing subsidies to the manufacturers itself, right? Mahindras, Marutis and Toyotas. Now, these subsidies will also go down somewhere or the other. Now, once these subsidies will go down, we already have seen that a, the profit margins itself in the traditional auto industries are very less, 5 to 7 percent. Now, in a new model, these entire profits would be even smaller, right? It could be 1 percent or there could not be even a break even, right? So, when these subsidies go down, then the entire auto industry, when they are thinking about EV, it could be a huge problem. Right? So, when you are talking about EV, you cannot ignore the financial benefits that these organizations are receiving and in the future, these financial benefits might go down and there might be penalties on top of it. Right? So, you need to think about when you are thinking about a trending topic, hey, what are the financial implications? And this is how it is playing out currently for the EV space. The other thing that you can also think about is, hey, what is the fundamental change that is bringing the entire this EV revolution? That is the CO2 emissions, right? The CO2 emissions, the COP26 summit that recently happened in Glasgow, all these things are the push that is coming from the major world leaders to actually reduce the impact of CO2 emissions on the world. So, it is very obvious that we will move away slowly from these traditional auto vehicles and we'll move into the EV space, right? So you understand these things for every single industry, every single trending topic that, hey, why is it at a fundamental level this shift is happening and what are some of the factors that are driving this shift, right? Now, if I take a step back and if I just give you a summary about the auto industry itself. Number one, we talked about revenues. Number two, we talked about cost. Number three, we talked about what are some of the current trends, right? The fourth thing that you can also talk about is the customer segments, right? Customer segments in the sense that, hey, people buy typically a small sized car. It could be for Maruti and Alto or Zen or any of these things or Swift. Now, the other level could be mid sized cars. It could be Sia's or Bellino or any of these things. And it could be an SUV like Ertiga, right? So, you can divide customers as well into different buckets. That is another interesting and super important topic when you are analyzing an industry. Who are the customers and can I break these customers into different groups? I hope these four factors will help you analyze any industry in the best way possible. Again, just to summarize, number one, we are talking about revenues, different channels of revenues. Number two, we are talking about costs. Right? What are the various cost components? Number three, what are the individual trends that are currently happening in this industry and you are looking into why that specific trend is happening and what are some of the major reasons behind these trends currently. Number four, who are the customers for this particular industry? Right? If you like this video guys, please do let me know. Please like the video and let me know so that I understand that hey, this is helpful for you. And I will be more than happy to create more such videos for industries going forward. Thank you so much guys and see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.